Should the 49ers trade a Kella Witherspoon? Ha. Huh. Tony. Uh, in some ways, he's the perfect trade piece for a team because, like Pettis, he's somebody that was highly drafted, obviously very talented, and another team may have had a high draft grade on him and, and might have some value in him. I think the emergence of Jason Verrett absolutely makes Akello Witherspoon expendable. Um, there's an argument about, out there. I think Grant may have been the first one to, set it, to say it. Uh, is Verrett better than Sherman right now if Sherman was healthy? And I think there's a very strong chance that that's the case. And if that's true, where is Akello Witherspoon now on your depth chart? He's fourth on your depth chart. Um, I think we might talk about this a little bit when we talk about the Willits trade, but the 49ers draft capital next year is not great. They lost a third round pick um, mm -hmm. with the Trent Williams deal. They're going to be up against the cap. They're going to need resources next year. And so um, I think there's a very strong argument to be made for, for uh, letting Akello go out the door. Yeah, it's a strong answer, Tony. What do you think, I'm, Jose? I'm going to say no because uh, mm -hmm. you don't know when Verrett's probably going to get injured again, which he might. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't trust him. It's like, all right, he's looked elite. All right, let's, let's, let's not forget this guy gets injured every year, all right? It's never a question of if. It's a question of when, you know, just Jimmy Ward, Tart. It's never a question of when, but if. I mean, excuse me, if, but when, and look, now they're both hurt it's simultaneously. So I think for that case, at least you want to keep him just to avoid another Brian Allen situation, Ooh. you know, protect, protect Kyle Shanahan from himself, which he Ooh. still might make that stupid decision because that was ugly. That was atrocious. Like, what are you doing? You're telling me you're protecting Jimmy Garoppolo, but you, <laughs> but you, but you held off a killer with a spoon until you realized, Hey, this is a bad move. I got to put him in there. Yeah, you so protected a killer, a killer, but you threw Jimmy out there. They, what there you we doing? go. So you're taking like, a killer right. for what? All right, dude. Yeah. Like, 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 come on, Kyle. You just went like this. You just butted heads with yourself. So that, that's that'd be the main reason. Other than that, does he have value? I think maybe a little bit. I think he has more than Pettis. You'd be like maybe a six. That might be high. Um, but I, I, I'd entertain the idea, sure. But it, unless someone some somehow some way proves themselves to be you know valuable in the depth chart, you know, you, you're gonna have to ride with the killer at this point. I love the phrase "somehow some way." It always makes me think of Snoop Dogg. Maverick, you're up. <laughs> you're up. Uh, like Jose was saying, I if you can get a six or a seven, I'd consider it, but there's just not enough depth at the cornerback position, safety position. Until we see what Motley can really do, I think you got to hold on to every single quarterback on your roster because if we if if it gets to the point where Dante Johnson and Brian Allen are the two cornerbacks, <laughs> that that's yeah, automatic <laughs> losses right there. You can't let that happen. And I know a lot of people are anti Akella Witherspoon, but once they saw Johnson and Brian Allen giving up touchdowns. 49er Twitter was all over Akella Witherspoon wanting him back out there. <laughs> yeah. No. Baby, come back. <laughs> so we're just going to write off Brian Allen like that. Okay. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, man, no, guys, remember, it was Robert Salas' fault. Yeah, it was Robert Salas' fault. Nick, what do you think? Yeah, you're Nick. If the depth were a little more in the 49ers favor yes he has an expiring contract you ideally want to get something in return for a guy you're more than likely not going to bring back anyway unless the 49ers sign him to like a one-year contract that they might do with solomon thomas just to have them be that depth piece on the defensive line as a cornerback so if the depth were there i would say yes try to get something in return for witherspoon but since it's not just like jose and maverick we're talking about you're one player going down from having Brian Allen have to enter the game or Dante Johnson. And for that reason, you can't bank on the health of Jason mm. Verrett and Richard Sherman. You can't do that. So for that reason, I think Witherspoon, just because he had a good start to last season, a sixth round's not in left. If we're getting up to like the four, like the fourth, fifth round range, yes, I'm pulling the trigger for a sixth. There's just too much risk to pick up an additional six-round pick. So for that reason, no, I'm not trading a Kello Weatherspoon unless you're wowed with an offer. I'm so glad I get to answer last because you guys make all the great points and then I get to sit and think about it and make the even better point. <laughs> no, to me, it seems like you guys are both right. I mean, you need draft picks. A Kello Weatherspoon's a prime candidate. You need corners. He's the one guy keeping you from the Brian Allen level. You're stuck. So what do you do? You don't trade him. You don't make a decision yet. You see what happens the next two games. If you lose the next two games and you're three and five, trade them. Your yep. season's over. A good Forget point. it. Go to the Brian Allen level and lose as many games as you need to lose and get Trevor Lawrence or whoever. But if you win one of the next two games, either one, I don't think you can make the deal. I think you need to keep Akella Witherspoon because when you trade him, you're saying, I don't care if we have to play Brian Allen. I don't care. It doesn't matter. 
Uh, and that's hard to do, even, even though you desperately need uh, d- draft picks. So I think it's kind of, I'm hedging. If they lose the next two games, yes, trade Akello. If they win one of them, you got to keep them. Uh, and, and unfortunately, as much as you would like that late sixth round hey. pick. What, Jose? Have, what, Nick? Wait, oh, wait I, Grant. Go ahead, wait, Jose. Grant, I think, have, Grant, they're already tanking. That's why the fire sale started. They're, t- they're trading Tante Pettis. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, this is something that I was thinking about earlier, and it's Dante Pettis and Akello Witherspoon. They're like the same version of each other as far True. as where they stand with the organization. Oh, yeah. And they're both two guys who the team spent a second and third round draft pick on, so day two draft capital. And this is something I tweeted out today. If you look outside the defensive line position and other draftees that didn't step in and were solid players right away, the 49ers have had a very rough time developing players like Akella Witherspoon, Dante Pettis, Tarverius Moore. It's like, why is it that these guys who just don't step in and are starters right away can't get to a level where they're at least contributing? I'll give yeah. – I was going back and forth with a couple people earlier. They said George Kittle. Okay. George Kittle's a superstar. How much of that is because of the 49ers actually developing him? And how much is it just based on the fact that he's George Kittle? Drake Green. How Drake, come the Niners can't miss with their day three picks, but day two is so hard? Like, yes. You know? but it, it's like, and then you look at DJ Jones. He plays defensive line. Though, luckily, if they weren't able to develop undrafted free agents, where would this team be? Because Not guys good. that they actually invest in. It, Tarverius Moore is this close, this close to becoming Akella Witherspoon and Dante Pettis. It's like, why is this guy not a priority to get on the field? And now well, think- it took both starting safeties, both starting safeties to finally get Tarverius Moore on the field, assuming he plays this Sunday. You don't even know yeah, if he plays because Shanahan's not revealing what he's doing, supposedly. That's true. Watch, but if he ever gets Jonathan on the field, Cyprian. I think he'll be an upgrade over Jimmy Ward. I do. Jonathan Cyprian's probably going to play over Tarverius Moore. It's going to be like, what the hell's going on? Yep. Really? I don't think so. We'll see. No, I, I, we'll I wouldn't be surprised, that. though.